dodge a lot of headaches by creating it as a package from the beginning, but I see a lot of people using modules like we've done so far. So I wanted to show you the process of converting these into using a package and also the reasons why you'd want to do that. Now, if you remember in the last video, I said that I would be putting our database models into our main application rather than splitting them into a different file like we did with our forms. And that's because the imports can get a little weird. So let me actually split these models into a different file so that we can see what happens and what the problem is. So I'll create a file here within my main project. And I'm gonna call this uh, models.py to hold our database models. And now let's move those models over to that models.py file. So I'm gonna grab the user and the post models there, and I'm going to cut those out of our application and paste those in to our models.py file. And we can see that our classes use the model class from our DB instance, so we need to import DB as well. So let's grab that by saying from flask blog, which is our application file, import DB. And our models also use the date time library here. So let's move that import from flask blog as well. So I'm going to go to flask blog here and grab the date time module. So I will cut that out and I will paste that into the top of our models here. So I will save that and save our flask blog as well. And now within our flask blog module, we're going to be using those models within our views. So we need to import those here as well. So we can import those uh, just like we did with our forms by saying from models import, and we wanna import user and post. Okay, so now let's run our application and see if everything worked. Now, since I mentioned that there was uh, problems with this, we can probably take an educated guess that this isn't gonna work, but let's go ahead and try it anyway. So if I pull up my terminal here and try to run this application, just like we have been doing, I'll say python flashblog.py and run that. And we can see we got an error. We got an import error, cannot import name user. And actually what's going on here is kind of a big mess. Now I'm going to walk through this, but if you don't quite understand it, then don't worry about it right now. The solution that we're gonna put in place is going to be a lot more simple than what this uh, walkthrough of this error is gonna be. Okay, so this is called a circular import, but even this circular import is extra confusing. Now I knew that this would fail, but at first, this was really confusing to me as to why this was failing on the user import and not somewhere else. So let's walk through this step by step and explain why it failed on the user import. So we're actually running our flask blog script from the command line. And when we run that script, it, I'll pull this up, it imports the user and post from our models module. And anytime Python import something from a module, it still runs that entire module. Now, some people aren't aware of that. They think that it only runs the section that is being imported. So when it runs the entire models module, then it comes into our models script here, and then it tries to perform its imports. So then it gets here to this line and says from flask blog import DB. So at this point, this is where I would expect that this would fail because we've already seen the flask blog module. That's where we just came from. And I figured it would just say, hey, I've already seen this flask blog module and I haven't seen this DB variable that you're asking for. So if I switch over here to flask blog, the reason it hasn't seen this DB variable yet is because it's created after our import statement. So it's down here. So then it would throw an error saying that it doesn't, uh, that it can't import this DB variable, but it doesn't do that. It fails on the user import. So why does it do that? So what's actually going on here is that when we ran flask blog from the command line, we're running it directly with Python. And when we run a script directly, Python calls the name of that script double underscore main. And we've seen that before with our conditional down here at the bottom. That's why we hit this conditional to run our application. So we're running this flask blog script, which Python calls double underscore main. And then we say from models, import user and post. And then it comes in and runs our models script. And when it gets to this line here from flask blog import DB, Python actually hasn't seen flask blog yet because Python named flask blog double underscore main. So it will actually run our flask blog module for a second time from the beginning. So it comes in here 
And then it redoes all of these same imports, reruns this models import again. And when it gets to that models import, it says, okay, I've already seen this models module, but I don't know what this user class is. And the reason it doesn't know what this user class is, is because it is below our imports in the models module. So that is why it fails on the user import and not on the DB import. Now, I know that this is confusing, but just keep bearing with me. So if I were to come into my models uh, module here, and I was to change this flask blog import instead to double underscore main and save that, then this should still give us an error, but it should give us the error that I initially expected saying that it can't find the DB variable instead of failing on the user. So if I go back to the command line and clear out uh, that output, and then try to rerun this application again, then we can see that we still do get an import error, but it's saying that it cannot import name DB. And just to walk through this one more time, the reason that it fails on this import now is because when we come in here uh, to our Flask blog module, it runs this and it gets down and runs our models import. And when we come into our models, now we're running uh, this import here from main import DB and it's already seen this main module, but it hasn't created this DB variable yet. So that's why it fails on that import. Now we could fix this by moving our uh, models import here down below the creation of our DB variable. So if I uh, move that below there and save this and then rerun our application from the command line. So I'll clear out that and run that. Then we can see that this seems to be running. And if I pull up the website here and rerun this or reload it, then we can see that it is running now. So even though our application is running now, uh, the way that we actually solve this problem is still really ugly. And if we were to run our application where Flask blog wasn't set to double underscore main, then all of this would fail. So for example, when we created our database in the last video by doing db.createAll in the command line, uh, that will no longer work. So let me show you this by actually deleting our current site.db file. And I'm just going to delete it here from my uh, sidebar. And now we'll try to recreate this um, from the command line. So to try to recreate this, I will stop the running server with control C and clear that out. And I'll start up Python, just like we did in the last video, we can say from flask blog, uh, import DB then we can see that at this point that this fails. And that's because it's looking for DB in one of our imports in double underscore main. And at that point, uh, double underscore main is no longer our Flask blog module. Um, so I know that all of that was confusing, but if you don't understand it, then it's no big deal. Uh, the solution that we're going to go over is a lot easier than going through the problem itself. I just wanted to justify why we were restructuring this project and the packages, uh, which is going to fix this. Now, just to give credit where credit is due, I first saw a good explanation of this in a talk that uh, Miguel Greenberg gave in a 2016 PyCon talk called Flask at Scale. And that is where I first saw a good explanation of these import issues. Okay, so the solution here is to set up our code in a way to where we're not running Flask blog directly. Uh, that way it won't get that name of double underscore main. So the way we're going to do this is to turn our application into a package and using a package will make all of these imports more simple and allow us to separate things out better than we've done now. So in order to tell Python that your directory is a package, you just need to create a double underscore init file. So let's create a package uh, with the name of our application. So I'm going to exit out of Python here and now I'm going to pull back up our project and our editor. And within our project, I'm going to create a new folder with the same name uh, as our application. So I'm going to create a new folder here and I'm going to call this flask blog, all lowercase. And within this folder, we'll create a double underscore uh, init.py file. So I will right click on here and say new file. And this is double underscore init double underscore dot pi. And again, I know that the text is a little small to see over here in the sidebar, but I'll show a larger version of this structure here in a second. Um, okay, so now we have a new package with the name uh, of our application. So now let's move some of our current project into this new package. So I'm going to open this in Finder, and if you're working on Windows, then you can do this in Explorer. 
So now let's move everything from our application so far into this package, except for the module named Flask Blog. Let's leave that where it is. So the forms and models and static folder and template folder, we're going to move all of these into the Flask Blog package. So I will grab all of those and move those in to our Flask Blog package. Now, this PyCache, don't worry about that. It's uh, just something that gets created. We can actually just delete that for now. Okay, so now in our project directory, we can see that we have this Flask blog package and this Flask blog module. So now I'm going to go back to uh, Sublime Text and I'm going to close everything down here for now. Okay, now we want to open up that double underscore init.py file. So our init file in our package will be where we initialize our application and bring together different components. So I'm gonna have our previous uh, Flask blog module open here and we can separate out certain parts. So I'm gonna open up our previous application module. And now I'm gonna grab all of the imports and the parts where we are creating our application. So I'm gonna copy from our imports all the way down to the uh, creating the instance of our database. So I will cut those out and paste those in to the init.py file. And now in our old application module, uh, now we're left with a lot of route information. So let's actually separate out our routes into their own module so that everything has its own place. So I'll create a new file within our package called routes.py. So create a new file, call this routes.py. And now let's grab all of that route information and paste it into routes. And I'm going to grab the dummy data and the models import as well. So I will copy all of this route information. I'm basically going to copy everything except where we're running our application. So we don't want the uh, if name is equal to main conditional. So I will cut out all of that, clean this up a bit, and paste that in to routes. Okay, so now all we're left with in our original application file is what we were using to run the application. So let's leave this here. And when we wanna test what we've got, we'll still be running this file. Uh, that's only job is to grab the app and run it. So first of all, since running the application is the only purpose of this file now, let's rename this to run.py so that that's clear. So I'm going to come over here and right click on this file and rename this, and I'm gonna rename this to run.py. That way we don't confuse the name of that module with our new package that is now named Flask Blog. Okay, so we're still running app.run within this file. So we need to import the app to run from our package. And to do that, we can simply say from Flask Blog import app. And when you're working with packages, that is going to import from the init.py file within that package. So that app variable has to exist within init.py. And it does. You can see that we're creating it here. So it will have that. Okay, and lastly, we need to go through our other files and clean up our imports. So some of the imports uh, within this init.py file were only used in our routes. So we still need to import uh, Flask here, but render template and URL4 and all of those were only used in our routes. So let's move those there. So I'm gonna copy this entire line and paste those into the routes. And we don't need this Flask object here. We only need render template, URL4, Flash, and redirect. So now if we go back to the init.py file, then we can remove all of those imports except for Flask. So we'll keep that. Okay, so we still need this SQL Alchemy here since we use it for our app initialization down here uh, on line eight. Now the forms, we were also only using within our routes. So let's grab those and move those there. So I'm just gonna cut those out and now paste these into our routes. And also now when we do these imports, instead of importing from models and forms like we did before, now that we're in a package, we are going to use the package name and then the module name. So it's gonna be flaskblog.forms and flaskblog.modules. So let's save that. And also if we scroll down here a bit in our routes, then we can see that our decorators are using this app. That, so it uses the app to create these decorators. So we need to import that app variable into our routes also. So we can import that from our package. Um, so just like we saw before, we can say from flask blog, 
import app. Now, if we go back to our app initialization, then we need to import our routes here also, so that when we run our application, it can find those. Now, even though we've fixed the problems with the messy imports, we still have to watch for circular imports. So remember that our routes are importing this app variable here. So we can't import the routes at the top of the file or else we'll get into one of those circular imports again. So instead, let's do the import of the routes after we've made uh, the application initialization and put it down here at the bottom. So I'll say from flask blog import routes and save that. Okay, so we're almost done here. So let's also check our forms and models modules as well. So let's open both of those up. So first let's check our forms. So in forms, we're not using any other modules from our package. We're just using packages that we pip installed. So nothing needs to be changed there. So lastly, we'll check our modules or models. Okay, and here's where we had our messy workaround from before. Now, instead of importing from main, we can simply import from flask blog because now we know that's not going to be called double underscore main anymore. So we can just say from flask blog, import db. And that's going to come into the init.py file and import this db variable here. Okay, so that should do it. But before I run this, let me show you the tree structure of what we've done in this video so you can get a better idea of what this looks like. So I've installed a nice command line tool here called tree that allows uh, me to print out this structure. Okay, so we can see that in our project directory, we now have this flask blog package and a module called run.py that will run our application. Now within the flask blog package, we have this double underscore init.py file that tells Python that this is a package. And it also initializes and ties together everything that we need for our app. And we now have a routes file that contains all of the logic for those. And everything else should be familiar from our other videos, uh, but we've just cleaned up the imports. So we have the forms and the models modules. And also we still have the static and the templates folders. And we didn't change anything within those two directories. Okay, so now let's run our application and make sure that this all works properly. So I'm going to uh, clear this out and run our application. Now, remember, instead of running flask blog.py, we're now going to do Python run.py. Okay, so we can see that we didn't get any errors and it says that it's running in debug mode. So let me open this up and reload this page and see if all of this works. So I'll just click on a few links here. It looks like all of this is still working. And let's see if our uh, fake email login still works here and everything. Okay, so it looks like all of that still works well, so that's good. Now, not only does our application now work in our browser, but we can also create our database again, which failed when we tried this before. So if I pull up my command line and stop our server and clear this out, and now try to create this database again, I can say Python to start up our Python interpreter, and from our package, so I'll do from flask blog, import db, and that worked fine. This is just that SQL alchemy uh, message. It's uh, not a failure. So now we can also import our models. So we can say from flask blog dot models, import user and post. And now remember that we deleted our site.db file. So let's create that again. So we can do db dot create all and run that. And now if we do a user dot query, dot all, then we should get an empty list. And that's what we get. Okay, so now I'm going to exit out of our Python interpreter. And now I'm going to rerun that tree command again to see this structure. And again, it creates these uh, PyCache directories, don't worry about those. But the important thing is that we can see that the site.db file is now inside the package. And that's because we set it to a relative location of being in the same directory as that uh, database. So that's fine for now. 
Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Now, I know that in this restructuring video, we didn't get much further in our actual application in terms of adding new features, but hopefully you have a better idea for why it's a good idea to structure these applications in this way and how it can save you a lot of headaches down the road. So in the next video, we will be getting back to adding features and we'll modify our register and login routes so that we can actually create real users in our database and be able to authenticate them and also you know, log in and log out and things like that. So if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.